Hey, so I know it's been a while since I last uploaded the video. College Ooh, has been... Hmm. I've gotten a few subs uh, from my shame video since I last uploaded the video. And for all of you watching who came from that video, um, I just want to say thank you. I really appreciate the support. Uh, but enough about that for now. Uh, let's talk about an interview with a vampire. So, an interview with a vampire, right? I'm sure if you're familiar with this work, you're more familiar with the books than the movie, but there is a movie adaptation of it. And uh, when I was really young, my sister really loved the book series. And uh, too bad I'm illiterate. So when I saw the movie was on Netflix, I thought, you know, why not give it a shot, watch it, see if it's good, maybe not. And I was pleasantly surprised. The movie is kind of nice. In an era where vampires in modern day fiction are usually romanticized for their powers, their, the lore, uh, most commonly like the power dynamic between uh, vampires and humans, with humans being the prey and vampires being like the predator and for the predator to fall in love with a human, it's just kind of like, oh. And I, I do fuck with some of those movies, uh, like at least personally, the Twilight movie, like the Twilight saga is forever just goaded in my heart. But an interview with the vampire is pretty different. The movie more so tackles the toxic relationship with realistic implications uh, in the guise of a vampire fiction movie. I'm not only going to talk about that, but I'm also going to talk about the relationships between the characters, the character of Dewey, Lestat, and Claudia, and the implications of it in a real world sense. I think for as mythical as vampires have been portrayed as in literature, Anne Rice did a great job of writing a story where we can kind of connect to those characters by making bridges through these connections through these through emotions that we share with the characters on screen not to say this movie is one of the greatest or so far removed from the theme flicks that we get nowadays uh you still have a goofy ass tom cruise and brad pitt trying his hardest to be emo kristen Dunst also did pretty well uh i feel like we'll talk more about that in the recap speaking of which the movie starts with louis Brad Pitt's character being interviewed by a reporter in a hotel room. He starts when he was still human and how he just lost his wife and kid. Ever since then, he's been reckless and sought out for death. His behavior drew the attention of Lestat, a vampire from France who grew interested in Louis. He then sucks Louis' blood and gives him the choice to either be left for dead or be a vampire. Louis says he wants to become a vampire, so Lestat makes him one. Mind you, I worked on the script before I read a little bit about the book, and in the book, uh, Lestat turns Louis into a vampire because he wanted Louis to be his eternal lover and companion. Which the movie doesn't tell us, but I'm still gonna be working with what the movie itself gives us. I know this is gonna be really frustrating to people who've read, who have read the book, but that's just how I'm gonna roll with the video. Why he turned Louis into a vampire isn't too clear, nor do I think the movie has invited too much nuance yet. But considering how Lestat acts around Louis after this, how how clingy he is to Louis, how he spends every day, every every second with Louis actually, and how much he's trying to make Louis more like him. Uh, it seems like Lestat wanted a companion through Louis, and that's why he changed Louis into a vampire. So in a way, Lestat did it more for himself instead of answering Louis's prayers, which he initially presented himself to be doing so. So what do we have right now? We have Louis. Uh, dealing with grief in a self-destructive manner and the stat taking advantage of that to make a companion for himself dealing with his loneliness. Notice as well how the stat always calls it like the dark gift and that he's giving Louis the choice that he never had. Kind of making it seem like being turned into a vampire is a privilege which works for the stat's favor because he's the one who did it. The way the stat words things and but and like spins things you know being manipulative that's basically his character and the more the movie goes on the more we get to see more examples of this after louis wakes up as a vampire the stat starts bringing him around and preys on women with louis trying to make him succumb to his innate dud lust and make a killer out of him louis being new to being a vampire is still reluctant to kill not completely letting go of his humanity way too soon the stat then brings Louis to a party where he starts justifying murder to him, saying killing bad people are so much more satisfying and they taste better. Trying to make murder more morally ambiguous, questioning the character of the victim instead of the act itself, changing the question into do you think they deserve to live instead of does it feel right for you to kill, 
This is, again, one of the multiple ways Astat tries to manipulate the people around him. Astat manages to get Louis alone with the woman who murdered her husband, the perfect opportunity to get him to kill someone, a despicable human being walking alongside him and no witnesses. Before he gets to kill her though, the dog starts barking at him, and Louis, being annoyed by them, kills the dogs first, leaving the woman to be killed by Lestat instead. It's unclear whether Louis would have actually killed her, but that's kind of irrelevant for now. Instead, we get some action, a brawl between these two. No any help. That's more like it. I you're that's why I chose you. Yeah, the next video is gonna be on like Shutter Island or something like that. Maybe Twilight. Louis then burns his estate down. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot to mention he owned the plantation with a lot of slaves. Make of that what you will. Louis wakes up in a boat headed to New Orleans with Lestat who was waiting for him to wake up. In their time in New Orleans, Lestat brings harlots with them in their rooms and still tries to make Louis a killer to feed his hunger. Louis still won't budge and roams the streets of New Orleans alone. He stumbles across a house with a little girl mourning the passing of her mother. He tries to comfort her and hugs her, but in his bloodlust involuntarily sucks her blood and almost kills her. Louis, believing she's dead because Lestat shows up from nowhere and keeps telling him that they should celebrate his first kill, he flees in shame and feeds from all the rats he can find. Lestat finds him, then tells him as God kills indiscriminately, they should as well. He tells Louis that he has a gift for him and when they arrive back in their room, he sees the little girl he thought he killed on the bed, with Lestat giving Louis the choice between leaving her for dead or allowing Lestat to turn her into a vampire. Louis accepts his proposal and Lestat makes Claudia a vampire. Now, a lot can be said here and I'm gonna talk about it. So first we have Louis trying to kill himself again. So Louis has already been in the brink of death once and decided he wanted to live so that that gave him another opportunity with vampirism. And now Louis doesn't think it's worth it to live like this and would rather die with his manner just burning down because the life he's living right now is no better than the life that he wanted to take at the start of the movie. To someone like Louis, uh, someone who was chasing death before he accepted vampirism and wanted a new, you know, purpose in life, it's not worth it to live again if that means that you're going to be a bloodthirsty monster like this murderer. It's against his human nature. It's against his goodwill to to kill. But the thing is, it's like when you're a vampire, it's that's it's innate at that point. You need to do that to basically survive. This is his nature now. And no matter how he feels about it, he can't escape it. Now, there are also things that can be said with the circumstances in which he became a vampire. Even though I mentioned a while ago that he agreed to the stat turning him into a vampire, that doesn't necessarily mean uh, in a way that he wanted to be a vampire. And it really could have just been him uh, wanting death, but actually being at the face of it, still wanting to live. And the only way that the only option he was given at the time to continue to live was to become a vampire and just dedicate your life to that so you can say he wasn't thinking straight when he agreed to the stats proposal so to bring up a harvard study real quick right 70 percent of people who commit suicide don't do it again and uh, it's my hypothesis because the study doesn't make one that the reason why is because but like it's one thing to think about suicide but to actually taste death, like to be that close to actually losing losing your life, it makes someone want to live. And it's not like their life suddenly got better or they suddenly think that their situation is more manageable or anything like that. I think it's more so that it's just innate. It's human nature that we're going to protect our own lives, that we're going to try to live for as long as possible. Uh, we are more likely to protect ourselves than to kill ourselves. That's why there. That's why we have an instinct that comes out, which makes us more efficient at protecting ourselves and protecting others. And we don't have an instinct that makes us more efficient at killing ourselves if we decide to do so. Like this is a case by case study, and no general assumption can be, nor I think should be made. Uh, we, you still have the thirty percent of people who still try to commit suicide again after surviving it with 23% of them being non-fatal. With that being said, if I was to kind of surmise what I think is going through Louis's head, I think Louis lost his will to live with the death of his wife and his kid and uh, wanted to die. But the moment he was actually faced with death, de death, death, but the moment he was actually faced with death, he wanted to live again. He wanted to survive that. And uh, the only option he had was to become a vampire. 
but the life that he has right now is something that's just as unbearable, if not even more unbearable than the life that he had before, that now he's willing to fully go through with another suicide attempt that would have killed him had it not been for the stat saving him at the end, you know, so just that's what would have happened. Notice as well how the stat has kind of saved Louis's life twice at this point, and uh, Louis's never been thankful for it. The next big moment that I want to talk about is the stat manipulating Louis into turning Claudia into a vampire. Let's just recall a few themes of Louis's character. Well, for one, he is someone that values human life. He doesn't want to kill anyone. He is very remorseful in the face of grief. His wife and his child die, and he becomes very self-destructive, and now he becomes a vampire. And uh, because of his thirst to kill others, he'd rather kill himself than live through with it. And third is that, as Louis has mentioned, you know, throughout the movie, being a vampire has kind of been like a living hell. So with all that being said, why does Louis agree to Lestat turning Claudia into a vampire, basically condemning her to an eternity of hell on earth? Well, it's because I feel like the stat manipulated Louis's grief into making Louis more accepting of the stat's proposals. <laughs> we know that the stat knows that Louis regrets killing Claudia. Uh, that was Louis's first kill, and it's a child. The uh, as the movie progresses, we then see that Louis was very protective and caring of Claudia. So there is that, and at first. Uh, Louis initially de declines the offer, Del doesn't want Lestat to make Claudia into a vampire. But then after Lestat asks Louis, well, would you rather have her die? Then Louis backs off, uh, seeing this moment for Claudia as a way to save her, kind of the same way that Louis saw his initial moment of becoming a vampire as a way to save him at the brink of death. Why Louis suddenly changes his mind um, on this? I believe it's because Louis at this point was pretty much primarily acting through emotion. Like his guilt was immense and he would rather relieve himself of that guilt because if Claudia becomes a vampire, Louis can kind of tell himself, well, Claudia isn't dead. He would rather release himself from his guilt immediately instead of kind of focusing on the long-term consequences of Claudia being a vampire at a very young age. Louis initially knew that, well, he doesn't want Claudia to become a vampire because their life is like a living hell and Claudia is going to become blood like a bloodthirsty killer for the rest of her life and Louis doesn't want that for a child but because of his guilt he wanted to see Claudia live again this is what the stat was able to take advantage of at the moment and this is something that I'm pretty sure we've all gone through in one way one way or another however young or old we may have been. Being emotional makes all of us short-minded, makes us want to relieve whatever negative feeling we have right now and let tomorrow fend for itself. And it's no different with Louis in this circumstance. In a way, we can kind of relate to why he allowed the stat to turn Claudia into a vampire because maybe in our own lives, there's been a moment where we've, we, we didn't really make the best decision because of emotions being high at that moment. Also, I forgot to mention that um, the stat called Claudia a companion for Louis, and uh, Louis didn't say shit yet. So maybe the reason why the stat saw Claudia as a companion for Louis was because the stat saw Louis as a companion for him when he changed Louis. And uh, that just adds to the thought. Like, we already know, right, because of the book, that Louis is meant to be the stat's lover, but we don't know that in the movie so it's just like you know uh the movie does have hints here and there to kind of still show you what the purpose of the stat turning louis into a vampire was supposed to be for so props to the movie not much happens here louis narrating over a time skip though he does mention that maybe Lestat changed claudia because he was lonely so yeah so just to add this right here coming into making this analysis i thought vampires were really cool but after really looking at this movie it's like man dude vampires are douchebags <laughs> here we get another telling scene years flew by and now claudia wants to be a full-grown woman but will never grow as she became a vampire at a very young age she gets mad at lestat for making her and louis vampires lestat then tells her that she should be glad she's a vampire otherwise she'd be dead 
She starts to ask questions, like asking Louis how it was she came to be. Louis brought her to her old house and told her that he took her life and Lestat gave her another. She responds with, And here it is. And I hate you both. She gets over it by the time Louis comes home and tells Louis it's about time they got rid of Lestat, and she's got a plan to do so. She approaches Lestat while he plays piano. He's visibly annoyed by her, and she keeps calling him the father of lies but wants to make peace. She tells him that he's got a present for him, just like how Lestat told Louis that he's got a present for him when he presented Claudia's body, except instead of keeping them together, this present is gonna rip them apart. She gets Lestat to feed on dead blood to make him vulnerable, then she slits his throat. They dispose of his body in a swamp, and finally, Louis and Claudia are free from Lestat. After they get rid of him, Claudia starts doing research on vampires to know more about their kind. They stay in an abandoned house where they get a visit by the doorbell. Unbeknownst to them, Lestat somehow survived and proceeds to attack them in his rotting state. He starts to talk about his diet and Louis throws a lamp at him that ends up burning multiple houses down. They get away in a ship sailing to Paris and that's where I'm going to stop going through scenes piece by piece. So after talking about the first hour of the film and kind of analyzing moments here and there, what do we have so far? Well right now we have a story of Louis, a self-destructive young man who crosses paths with a lonely and manipulative vampire with Lestat who presents himself as the answer to Louis' prayers. He makes Louis' life a living hell and forces him to stay in this toxic relationship by bringing Claudia into it, giving Louis someone to take care of with Lestat. This eventually bites Lestat in the ass because Claudia ends up being the one who finally separates Louis from him, and this is because they both got fed up with his lies and behavior. The movie continues with Louis and Claudia having, like a parent-child relationship, as they try to figure out what it means to be a vampire, searching for others like them. But what does that mean in the human context? Like, what can we derive from this story that can help us understand things around us better? One thing that I want to remind you about right now is that Lestat meant for Louis to be his lover. It's not said in the movie, but it's pretty important when establishing what kind of relationship this was meant to be for Lestat to begin with. This was meant to be a romantic relationship between him and Louis. Between Louis and Lestat, Again, like I brought this up at like the beginning of the video. Uh, vampires are usually used in fiction a lot nowadays for displaying power dynamics with again like a human and uh, and like a vampire like here. Um, but over here it's not really human to vampire. It's like maker to fledgling. you know like that, that's the power dynamic that, that there is there. unless that being a much more powerful vampire than Louis as well. And power can lead to abuse. We see Lestat uses power to force himself into Louis' life, spends every second with him, tries to turn him into a killer because he is one even though Louis still values human life. Every day was hell for Louis and Lestat couldn't care less about how Louis felt and only cared about having him around and trying to change him into his ideal partner. Louis really had enough of Lestat and was about to leave and Lestat traps him with a child. Like real idiots, like this shit really does happen IRL. Lestat doesn't change for them though, so in the end, they get rid of him together and Lestat's pride was his downfall. Now Louis and Claudia are both vampires, outcasts from society and unable to live amongst everyone else, no longer capable of having regular lives so they seek out for other vampires, other people who understand them and can help them make sense of it all. Now I'm gonna stop talking about the movie, the characters, the plot, whatnot. Fuck. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna stop talking about the movie for now and ponder with what we're left with. It's a tragic story of vulnerable people meeting the wrong person at the wrong place at the wrong time who makes their life hell on earth. Even when he knew that he wanted to leave the relationship and uh, knew that it wasn't good for him, he gets trapped with a child. And uh, this is someone that he would genuinely want to stay for and care for. We see people in relationships that aren't good for them and how it changes them. They don't feel like they can talk to anyone else because they're constantly being suffocated. They don't feel like they belong anywhere else in the world as long as their partner is with them. And it never stops until they get away from their abuser. And then there's a the matter of the child in their relationship who's also going to be a victim of the circumstances. Because this child is going to grow up with the only parental figures that the child has bickering and fighting. And uh, these, it's, the child is going to be fucked up. And uh, are they supposed to know any better? Like, they're only children. They don't, they don't know anything and it's up to the parents. It's the responsibility of the parents to 
grow that child right and make them a good person. And two million percent, I think the saddest part about this whole story is that there are, it's way too common. It's way too common in real life that things like this actually do happen where kind-hearted people um, uh, become abused, taken advantage of by abusive uh, partners and uh, trap them when they want, even when they want to leave and just ends up causing a lot more harm than there ever needed to be. There's a lot more that can be said about the themes that I've talked about and how they kind of grow. Like, for example, the stat and Louis making amends, reconciling what that means. And then there's also the story of Louis summoning the ghost of Claudia and finding out just how fucked up Claudia uh, became because of Louis and the stat. I want to say that coming into this analysis, I initially thought that I was going to make the video about how emotions like love envy loneliness and solitude were portrayed by the characters but like as i kept digging into um just the themes in the movie the story that's been told here um i found a story of abuse and i changed like a little bit of the intro and took the video a lot more seriously themes like themes like these have been tackled in other vampire movies i'd say easily um, Twilight, you have Bella and Edward with whatever they have going on. Um, Edward sneaking into Bella's fucking window and then breaking her truck and just like in a lot of ways being pretty emotionally abusive to Bella. But Bella is Bella acts the same fucking way, and no one in that movie, no one in that saga acts like a normal person anywhere. So is there really is there really any harm and there's no consequences it's it's fiction take the cheese eat it and have fun but uh with uh an interview with a vampire they kind they really give you consequences with these actions you have um Dewey and because of his kind-hearted nature never being able to fully uh like kind of grow into his life as a vampire you have claudia and her desire to grow up change uh despite her inability to do so leading her to kill a stat and uh, the stat being unable to change for the better of anyone else got him separated from louis and claudia for a very long time with consequences like these being present in the story it makes it that much more worth it to dig deeper into these into how the story explores them and i hope you all enjoyed it um i really hope you enjoyed watching this analysis as much as i enjoyed making the script i think this movie does a good job in exploring basically the things that i was talking about and maybe you've read the book and uh, you really hate what i made of the story <laughs> maybe you've seen the movie and saw something that you would also want to talk about as well regarding this piece of art and i would love to hear it all in the comments i'm like even more so than the shame video i really want to know what people have to think about this because i i don't know if i overshot it or not at all because personally uh like i saw i, I didn't think of any of this i saw none of this in my first viewing and i don't think that if I wasn't like pausing after every important scene to kind of type down what I felt like was happening and like watching the movie twice, thrice, four times. Um, like I, I don't think I would have um, thought about the story in this light. And for some reason, if you're watching this late into the video and haven't seen the movie, mind you, I've only recapped the first hour of the film. It's 120 minutes. I think even a little bit more than that, maybe 130 but i've only recapped the first hour if anything i said is interesting to you and you think it might make for an interesting watch go watch the movie and maybe you might come away with it thinking something completely different from what i from what i've been talking about maybe you find a deeper story in there that i didn't and interpret and interpret this movie in a different way such as the beauty of art and this is the longest script i've written so far but uh fuck it i hope you all enjoyed the video and Bye. Being ruthless as them, and uh, if you have siblings, 
Man, dude, that <laughs> that shame video, man. I look terrible. <laughs> I had like fish eyes, like just the best of my life is behind me. I've lived 19 long years, <laughs> and uh, I, I I really wasn't doing too well uh, when I made that video. Though, it, like, it, it's always been like uh, something that's been on my mind ever since I watched Shame, which was ba back in 2017. So I've had the idea of this video in mind for like three years. It's unfortunate, like when I kind of got to making it, I wasn't doing the best myself, but uh, I've been taking care of myself ever since and uh, I've been doing a lot better. And for anyone who, and for those people, uh, for those eight people that have come from the Shame video, and decided to subscribe to the channel and see what else I have to say about movies even though this video is fucking uh I don't know like it's it was really poorly made I feel like even at the time I could have done a better job um I really appreciate the support and uh, I like I know I'm still growing as a content creator and as a person and I really hope that um I'm just gonna get better with making content from here on out so this this really is the end of the video so yeah now bye